Sean McIlvenet possessed the bravery of the likes of Tom Barry, Sean Tracy and Desi Grew. He was a meticulous planner and organiser like Brendan Moley and Ernie O'Malley. A revolutionary and visionary in the mould of Keenan and Mellows. At 11.15am on the morning of Monday the 17th of December 1984, a cloud of darkness descended across the country as news began to spread about the death, while on active service, of IRA volunteer Sean McIlvenna, just outside Port Moore, three miles from Armagh City. This was an area steeped in Irish heritage and patriotism, close to where the Irish natives, led by E. Moore O'Neill, and E. Rua O'Donnell took on the might of the English army in 1598, known as the Battle of the Yellow Ford. Like generations of Irish patriots before him, Sean McIlvenna had made the ultimate sacrifice for the freedom of his country from British rule, a desire he held for most of his adult life. And it was in County Armagh where Sean McIlvenna kept British forces on their guard. A carja, but while I'm fortunate, a core road, hig and also show. I'd like to welcome you to this online commemoration marking the 36th anniversary of volunteer Sean McIlvana. Sean died on this day back in 1984. He was killed just outside Portmore. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome his family who are watching from Belfast and Australia. Unfortunately, due to COVID restrictions, we are unable to gather at Sean's memorial down in Portmore. But we will continue to remember Sean and all our fallen comrades who gave their lives for Irish freedom. Sean Maxi McIlvana was born on 4th of April 1951 in the Belfast Docks area. Shortly after his birth, the family moved to Fort William Park before eventually settling on the Antrim Road. He had one brother, Neil, and two sisters, Jean and Rosario. Sean was a pipe fitter by trade. In 1970, he married his childhood sweetheart, Pat. They had met at their local youth club. He joined the Republican movement in 1971 and soon showed that he was an intelligent, dedicated and extremely security conscious volunteer. The RUC became suspicious of him due to an informer and he was forced to go on the run in 1972, settling in the 26 counties. Up home, anyone who knew Sean could testify to his sin sincerity, integrity and dedication, whether as a friend or as a comrade. He loved all kinds of sport. During the late 1970s, Sean became officer commanding of the IRA in the Armagh City area. Despite living in Dundalk, County Louth, Sean travelled discreetly in and out of Armagh with the support of a network of Republican safe houses. Sean also operated in an army capacity across the country and he was well regarded and respected by all those who came in contact with him. Sean and Pat had seven children. Pat had given birth to twins, Fiona and Sean, just two weeks before Sean's death. Their other children, Kathy, Sinead, Kira, Sarah and Patricia, ranged in age from 14 to 3 years at the time of his death. Well, it was about, I was about 13 and he was 14 and we were going to a youth club. It was called St Joseph's in the Antrim Road and I met him at the youth club and when I saw him I just went, wow, I fancied him. So um, I just let someone get struck with that one and he eventually knows that you fancy him so he, of course he's asking to leave me home. So that's how I 
we ended up together. And we had a car in the world, really. Went to his club. Um, he bought, walked me home, went to the pictures, went for walks. I didn't really go down the town because we weren't old enough to go down the town. You never really did go down the town. So I went to parties in people's houses. Of course, I started working, Sean started working. And the relationship started to get um, stronger, as one does, and fall in love. We were getting married then. Things were happening around us, but I didn't know that John was actually thinking about what was going on around us. He actually got involved in in the CDC just before we got married. And that was just one of his roles that he did do. He was a terrific organiser, um, and I think that sort of was his way through life. And again, similar to Dad, you know, Dad was very much in in a way of um, if you had to be on time, everything was in order, you, you know, and you followed suit on that. And Sean took that with him and was very much a part of that sort of character. Well, I came to Dundalk in 1978 and uh, it was immediately arriving here. I met him through a mutual friend. Uh, he was another Belfast guy and uh, we struck up a friendship immediately. Um, one of the first impressions that he was a very focused uh, guy. He sort of knew what he wanted and what he was doing with his life. Uh, we became friends very, very quickly. And it was actually through Sean that I got my first job here in Dundalk, uh, through another friend of his. So that was my first gainful employment when I got here. So from there on, we became very poly. Uh, I got to know him more and we became best friends. He was married. Um, he had a couple of kids whenever I first got to know him. And I got to know Pat and, and all the kids eventually. I knew he was very interested in republicanism. I knew he was a, a very uh, strong-minded person that seemed to know what he wanted to do with him, with his life. And we engaged in many conversations about the struggle and uh, the direction of the struggle. I learned many things. We had many, many an argument over things that was going on at the time. Uh, but I soon discovered that he, he was a very, very dedicated Republican. And outside of his family, the Republican movement was Sean's number one priority. Um, he was so army, um, so much that you went to talk to Sean about, all related to politics, um, what was happening, how things should go, um, and that a, a lot of our a lot of our conversations. That's what it all related around, and you know how how we were going to progress and bring this to where we wanted it to be. Until you really got to know Sean, you know. Everything, you know, was black and white. There was no grey in between it. He had good false ID. He was... How do I say it? Um, he was cocky enough to be able to sort of meet the Brits and sort of, you know, I'm Paddy Doherty or, um, you know, whoever. And it wouldn't have shown on him, like, you know, whereas a, a lot of other people would have sort of seen the Brits and sort of melted. But no, he was that arrogant about himself, I suppose, in a way that he could have met the Brits and sort of says, well, that's who I am, like, you know, and walked on. Sean in our ma was, you know, a great operator. I think the Brits feared the Arma battalion at the time. Uh, you know, Sean, nobody knew. Sean, I don't think even the Brits had an idea that there was a Belfast commander in Armagh at the time. You know, it was that secretive. You know. And he, Sean, just hated the enemy you know, with a passion. You know, uh, very religious man. Always carried his rosary beads with him. You know. 
prayed a lot. But as I say, he hated the enemy, but he, he could respect, you know, a different point of view on the rest of it. Uh, but he, he was a soldier, you know, a very brave soldier. Well, when I got to know Sean, Pat, he was married to Pat, and Kathy and Sinead and Kira were already born. Um, that was followed by Sarah and Patricia, and then of course the twins. He was absolutely devoted to Pat and, and the kids. And I suppose when he was dealing with his private life, they were his number one priority. Um, when the twins were born, he was just became he was just over overwhelmed. He he had, he had got that son after six daughters, not surprisingly that he named him Sean. And um, but I recall being with him one evening when Pat was expecting, and there was no no mobile phones then, and he stopped to make inquiries about her in the hospital. And of course, Sarah was born, and in the car, there was a song being played by Sarah, like then Lizzie. And with a big cheesy grin on his face, he says, that's Sarah. And that was Sarah, and she became Sarah. Well, by this time, I had five girls, and um, lo and behold, I was pregnant again. And so then I thought, I'm in my chance, because Sean always wanted a boy. The one saying that, Sean always said, if he had a boy, his luck would change. As as it did, but um, Fiona was born first. That was on the fifth of December, and Fiona was born first. And three hours later, Sean was born, and Sean was over the moon, running around telling all his friends he was a daddy again, and he had a son. So I was in the hospital, that was the Monday, and I was in the hospital till Thursday, and Sean says, I have to go away again. And I says, why do you have to go away? And he says at the time there was quite a lot of IRA volunteers dying, getting killed. And he says, I have to go away. And there was also a new volunteer in his unit. And then I think that was his first job or something. And um, so it was a Thursday, and I was able to get Sean home. And I got photographs of Sean. And then I left him to the back door, and he said to me, Okay, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. That was the last time I spoke to him. On the morning of Monday, the 17th of December, 1984, two IRA volunteers, one of whom was Oglak Sean McElvena, exploded a massive culvert bomb, targeting members of the Ulster Defence Regiment as they approached the Mullinari Lisboffin Crossroads, just outside Blackwater Town. Sean and his comrade concealed themselves on a nearby hilltop and detonated the 1,000 pound landmine once the passing UDR patrol came within their sights. As the two volunteers retreated from the hilltop towards a shed where their getaway motorcycle was located, they were spotted by a passing RUC patrol who were responding in the immediate aftermath of the explosion. As the two volunteers ran up a field towards a nearby house, the RUC began firing and Oglak Sean McElvena was fatally shot. The other volunteer was later captured. Good evening. The police have shot dead a terrorist minutes after a landmine explosion injured seven UDR soldiers. Two of the UDR men are said to be seriously injured. The explosion happened on a small road between Armagh and Moy, and as the terrorists made their escape, they encountered a nearby police patrol. Lance Price reports. The UDR Land Rover was escorting a post office van along the Blackwater Town Road when the landmine exploded at Mullinary Crossroads. 
The Land Rover was blown into a field and according to local people, the bonnet and floor were torn off. The seven men inside were taken to the Craigavon Hospital, although five of them are not thought to be seriously injured. Minutes after the explosion, two men were seen running across the fields by a police patrol driving along an adjacent road. There was an exchange of shots in which one of the terrorists was killed. Two guns, a loaded magazine and a grenade were recovered. A second man was arrested. He's known to be the brother of Seamus Gru, an INLA man shot dead by the police in controversial circumstances almost exactly two years ago. Volunteer Sean McAvera from the Fleet Band in Glasgow. It's been an honour and a privilege to represent such a brave volunteer. We'd like to send our solidarity to Pat and the wider McAvera family and we'd like to thank you for your continued support over the past 21 years. We look forward to seeing all our friends and comrades next year on the road with us. On behalf of the Armagh Commemoration Committee, we'd like to thank everybody who is involved with this evening's online commemoration. We'd also like to pledge our continuing solidarity with Pat and with the McIlvana family. Finally, we'll have local activist Adam Costa who will conclude this online commemoration with the playing of Around the Vein. 
Går du mailer, mailer, Majakov.